mile in fog patches and showers early Friday, but improving to greater than six miles on Friday morning. Stars shining bright above. So here we are sailing along in the Aegean off the coast of Turkey. It's hidden away there in a bit of a heat haze. I've noticed the wind's picking up, Dick, a bit, but it doesn't seem to worry us. With I think it's a Code 2 we've got set and the Genoa. I mean, <laughs> we're not on the helm. We've just had a coffee and a bit of back lava. It's all very nice. How many? How long did it take you to come up with this Solent rig? I mean, you've used it for many years, I guess. Yeah, I mean, the funny thing is about the Solent rig, I kind of thought at one time that I'd invented it, but it turned out uh, after I'd uh, gone off to a sail maker and said, how about this rig? It turned out that it had been developed about five years before I told him about it. Um, but it, the, the reason we use the silent rig and we got it here, I think this is a perfect, perfect demonstration of the versatility um, of the silent rig for uh, cruising boats. and and. Yeah, here we are cruising along, as you say, just under nine knots or nine knots or so. Everything perfectly in control. No risk of a jibe because you've got nothing mm. boomed out um, to do to give you that problem. And uh, life's good. And that's and, what it's supposed to be. And the thing is, we are dead downwind. And it's yeah. always a bit of a fractious time, isn't it? When you've got a mainsail with a big boom out <laughs> well, with yeah. a preventer on it. Uh, you don't need that with this rig, clearly. Well, yeah, that, I mean, Obviously actually... Not. A dead downwind run is dreaded by an awful lot of people because you know the only way to really utilise that wind is uh, a butterfly setup with the main boomed out and of course you run the risk of a jibe. But in this rig with dual headsails and you can operate, um, we've got at the moment we've got um, the uh, Code 2 set and the Genoa but of course you can change to jib and Code 2, you can change down further and go Genoa and Code 2, and then you can furl your jib and your Genoa away as well. Yes. So you've got fantastic range of winds that you can utilise. And uh, for us, uh, searching out a dead downwind run um, is uh, optimised for cruising. For cruising, and, for cruising and, and, and as you can see, yeah. the boat's perfectly stable. Yes, which is yes, lovely. Yeah, that's right. Also, it's, uh, one assumes, it, I mean, I've watched you and Calvin, your crew, set this up today. So just the two of you. So it, it, it works for short-handed cruising. It's a big boat, 66-foot boat. Yeah, where the Code 2 is a, has a really big um, advantage, I think, over cruising chutes. It's not quite such a big sail. No. But it's got a much bigger range of wind thresholds right. it can take. So you don't suddenly get caught out by a blast and, and you've uh, blown out your cruising chute. You set it. Um, and when you're done with it, you furl it away. Yeah. You haven't got to keep hoisting it up and down no. all the time. Without getting too far off the Kraken, um, do these come as standard? Yeah, we, you know, what we're all about is creating the perfect cruising boat. And there's no doubt in my mind that you can't go better for cruising than a Solent rig. Okay. Um, it's just the versatility of it is huge you know you've got you go right from a blade jib for going hard up the wind which you can furl in the case of uh, the way we set up the silent rig we don't i don't believe at all in um self-tacking jibs because you can't reef a self-tacking jib no. um, and that self-tacking or that jib i should say uh, has also got to be your storm saw yeah so, and again the plan is always um not possible when you're going wing and wing like we are now or butterflies we are now um, somebody does have to go on deck but for all the rest of the settings nobody's got to get out of the cockpit right. and as you say Dick, it's a two two man or he actually when you're on jib and genoa it's a one man right. operation well, on a crack you're, yeah. you're not gonna beat top that are you now no. but when you deliver this this is your boat you white dragon yeah she was built in china and you sailed her back to the mediterranean and yeah. i think Calvin, your crew was telling me that um, uh, that you spent four to five days under this 
rig. Yeah, we did. We came up from Cape Town, yeah. um, running up to uh, Namibia, and uh, the seas were very calm. Um, the wind strength was between uh, 10 and 25 knots, and we set up precisely the rig that we got up today, dead downwind. Um, but uh, no, it's fantastic, and yeah. uh, and everybody really enjoyed the sail. And after all, that's what it's supposed to be yeah. all about. So, is it much more expensive the Solent rig to a conventional sloop? Yeah, it's one of the things that uh, is difficult to get across to people. When you say, "Oh, you know, it comes with the Solent rig as standard," you, you, I don't think. Um, I think it's one or two of our competitors might give a Solent rig as standard, right. but most boats don't. It's, you've got a, a, a sloop rig. Um, and of course, you've got an extra four stay. You've got an extra chain plate. Yeah. Then you've got an extra sail, and then you've got extra tracks. So it is so more expensive. It is more expensive. Yeah. You, in a boat of this size, to put that rig on, probably is costing uh, best part of twenty or thirty thousand dollars. Right. Um, and in a smaller boat, less money. The fifty or the fifty-eight. Yes. Less cost than that, okay. but nonetheless, it is a significant cost. But you know, if you're trying to build the best blue water cruising boat, yeah. then you've got to do what you think, put your money where your mouth is. And in any case, with that rig, your crew requirements drop, so are you saving money as as you cruise along, I suppose? Yeah, I crew, guess so, yeah. Crew changes and flights and all that sort of stuff. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You, you know, don't I mean, need it, as many people. Yeah, that's right. I mean, mm. all of our boats, from 66 down, 58 and 50, all of our boats are really aimed at the husband and wife type right. crew okay. and or husband and family, yeah. hub, husband, wife and family type crew. Um, and uh, you, you just need something that is enjoyable and easy for them to set uh, and doesn't have, you know, eliminates again as much risk as possible. So everybody knows that um, a jibe is a massively worrying incident, if an uncontrolled jibe, I should say. Chinese jibe, as some people yeah. call it, for whatever reason. Um, and that's eliminated with this dual head saw rig, and I think that's, there's terrific value for that. So if you were to have, if there was a sudden wind shift and you, the wind went on the other quarter, what happens in the solar Well, rig? you'd put the opposite sail away. You'd put your windward sail away. Right. What, you, um, you furl it? Yeah you'd, yeah, you'd furl it away. Yeah. I mean, it's a question of, uh, you know, 10 minutes or five minutes just furling that sail away. And then you'd go on uh, the other headsail. Right. And if the wind gets up further still, then you'd put that away and you take out the jib and further, uh, the genoa. And you go further still, you put the genoa away and you go on the jib. And then ultimately you're reefing in and reefing in on the jib. So you've got, a, you really have got a sail set for every wind. Right from about seven or eight knots, right the way through 50, 60 knots. So are, you, are you saying that you cannot get a wrap with a code two or a code zero? Yeah, I think Yeah, I think it's very unlikely. Okay. Yeah, yeah, I'm not saying, if you let the sail- Never say never. <laughs> yeah, if you let the sail go really, really slack and she started to twist around, but, well, let's put it this way, I'll just say, 27,000 miles, we, we've used that rig whenever we could. Um, and that was often. And what we also do is pole out the sails. Okay. So we're, as we are sailing around lovely uh, now, um, there's not a big sea, there's a, a bit of sea, um, although you don't really feel it in a Kraken. Um, if, uh, if you start to get in the trade winds, and you're picking up the trade wind swells, then you do get a filling and spilling going on. Right. But the way to get around that is to boom out the sails, right. and then the boat goes stiff, yeah. and the sails stop filling and spilling. It's easier on the sails, easier on the crew.